Darth Vader issue 3 sees the Dark Lord head to Naboo, remembering his time there with Padme. Sabe tells him they need to move to the Nibiri Lake Retreat since it is very close. Telling the troopers to stay with the shuttle, he tells Z67 to follow him. Vader and Sabe head into the retreat, where he remembers staying with Padme when she was being hunted by assassins. Z67 says that Sabe promised them security recordings, but Sabe doesn't know where they are exactly hidden. Suddenly, Vader ignites his saber, telling them to get down as two people suddenly open fire on him. Vader attacks, throwing the dining table at them, but Sabe stops him, since this is all a mistake as the men who attacked them are hers. She introduces Vader to Captain Typho and Captain Tonra, both of the former Naboo security forces. She demands to know why they attacked, and Typho says that they saw her with Vader, thinking that she was under duress. The droid asks if they thought they could kill Vader, but they know they couldn't, however they could give Sabe a chance to escape. Sabe says that the Queen is long dead and that she was but a shadow and she's not there to be saved by Tonra or Typho, but sacrifice at their side. Vader tells them that that's enough, asking why the men should be left alive. Sabe reveals that these men have the security recordings, which they hid in the retreat and Vader will need their help to recover them. Shutting off his saber, the men get to work, opening a secret passage and heading down long winding steps. Typho says that he always thought Padme was murdered, asking if Vader seeks the killers, but Z67 says that according to his records, Typho served as Padme's bodyguard during the Separatist Crisis, yet she was the target of multiple assassination plots during her watch, two of which happened in a single visit to Coruscant. Typho knows the droid is implying that he might have had a hand in them, but Z67 says he merely is trying to collect relevant information. Typho says that his team prevented countless threats and the attempts the droid mentioned were stopped by two heroes, and the handmaiden Corday gave her life, and a few years later, Anakin Skywalker gave his. Vader asks when he last saw Padme, learning that Typho saw her when the clones were burning the Jedi Temple, and she insisted on going to Mustafar herself. He knows he never should have let her go as the group reach a Gungan sub, which they take into the water as Z67 asks what was Captain Tonra up to after fighting the Trade Federation. Tonra says that he went undercover on Tatooine, under the behest of the newly named Senator Padme, who wanted him to look for Anakin Skywalker's mother who had been left there in slavery. Vader remembers his mother as he learns that Shimi disappeared long before Tonra and his men got there, but they did free many slaves. Sabe says that not finding Shimi and not freeing others is the greatest shame of her life. Vader almost ignites his lightsaber as suddenly they are attacked by a Kolo Clawfish, which begins crushing the sub. The glass on the sub soon cracks, forcing the inhabitants outside, where the captains use Z67 as a shield to prevent the monster from eating them. Vader uses his lightsaber to kill the beast whose partner, instead of attacking them, begins eating its friend. Tonra points out a underwater Gungan bubble heading towards it, and once inside, they find a Gungan wall art depicting the peace ceremony that Queen Amidala and Boss Nass participated in. Sabe points out Anakin to Darth Vader, saying that even as a child he served the Queen, and after she died, he vanished, and they mourn his loss as well as hers. Vader smashes the art, demanding the recordings, so Tonra hopes that, that they will be used to avenge Padme's murder, but Vader says that he will not be bargained with. The recordings are produced and given to the droid, who quickly circumvents the Old Republic security codes, finding the recording of Padme's apartment and a recording of Padme. However, the droid is quickly to correct Vader, saying that it is actually Sabe, who tells the gathered friends that they pledge to find the killer of the Queen and kill them all. The droid is impressed at Sabe's deception as Typho says that the last time he saw Padme, she was heading off to Mustafar to find Anakin Skywalker, and Sabe knows that Mustafar is Vader's domain, meaning he must have killed Padme and Anakin. Uniting his saber, Vader says of course he did, as Tonra activates a switch, as Sabe says that this is for Anakin and this is for Padme. The giant sea monster comes for the bubble, intending on swallowing it whole. Darth Vader issue 3 was another really great issue that deepened the investigation and mystery into Padme's death while also revealing some surprisingly cool new details. I love the inclusion of Captain Typho, 
character from the prequel trilogy, as well as Captain Tonra, who is merely a background character in Phantom Menace, but thanks to a few lines here, he has quite a surprisingly cool history, and I want to know more about his trip to Tatooine, trying to free Shimi Skywalker and slaves. That's, that's like a book onto itself. Watching Vader kind of squirm his way through this whole adventure has been really fun as well, and I love that he's always caught off guard by what's happening, and isn't ever too sure what's going to happen with Sabe and her people. It's a great new dimension to the character, and I'm looking forward to what other surprises Greg Pak has in store for us along the way. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.